All right, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Saturday. It's a weekend, October 28th, 2023, about 12.19 p.m. here, California time. And latest activity uh, looks like a 1.3 here in the region of California, uh, just south here of the border, south of San Diego. There's that little earthquake coming in, the latest. Uh, we did see some movement kicking up overnight still, uh, following that... Um, moderate earthquake activity here across the Antelope Valley area where they did see a 4.2 earthquake late last night that has been followed up by quite a few aftershocks here hopefully these are indeed aftershocks the latest one a 2.8 this morning here about an hour or so ago within that same area so um, things are st still kind of on the uptick here across the west coast uh, that's just one area of the west coast that we're watching uh, also here around the Bay Area, where they've seen that, uh, well, it's a 3.7, originally came in as a 4.1. South San Francisco area, San Bruno uh, region, just off the San Andreas Fault. Uh, that activity looks like it has halted since the last night. Um, but uh, it was pretty interesting here to see that migration of uh, earthquake uh, gradient pressure building up here across the Sierra Nevada Still thinking that there uh, there may be some potential of seeing some larger scale movement out here. Uh, so a couple areas there in California. Uh, Ridgecrest was looking at some uh, activity as well last uh, yesterday, although it looks like it's dying down here slightly. Uh, the other area out here across the eastern Pacific is this region up here in Alaska, north of Juneau. Uh, it is off of the plate boundary here just to the east of the uh, North American plate and the Pacific plate boundary. A little interesting activity stirring up out here. Now this area did see a 5.1 Covenant Life area uh, of Alaska. Interesting name there. And uh, that has been followed up. Well, this was yesterday. It did follow up a, with a 5.3. And overnight, uh, looks like still some earthquake activity. Uh, within the 2 to 3 range kicking up here, the latest one on the chart shows a 2.3 earlier, about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock this morning, my time. So activity still uh, on the uptick there in this area as well. Uh, generally speaking, this is uh, d definitely something to watch here with all this broad scale movement up and down uh, and off of the plate boundary here across the West Coast. Uh, areas around... Mount St. Helens area still seeing some earthquake activity. No increase in the multitude or magnitudes of quakes. It's just been an off and on, oh, about six to ten earthquakes a day, mainly below 0.5 or so. Occasionally we'll see a one pointer, but uh, for the most part, this earthquake activity just been, uh, it's just been there. Still a little uncertain as to why it's there, but uh, obviously there's a volcano there, but. Uh, as uh, far as if this is, uh, has anything to do with the influx of magma below, I don't know. I don't think so. We haven't really seen any elevated GPS systems or any uh, major volcanic emission rates, you know, jumping up. So we'll continue to watch that. A little bit of activity here across Mount Rainier as well. That's a uh, 1.3 coming in earlier this morning, negative. So that's uh, obviously a pretty shallow earthquake here just south of the summit area of Mount Rainier and also some activity stirring up here outside of Seattle last night with that three-pointer on the uh, Seattle fault zone all right let's see what else we got here for the uh, California region aside from our watch areas here mostly smaller microquake movement out uh, along the southern portion of the state today not seeing anything uh, abnormal at least for the most part, uh, generally small microquake activity across the San Jacinto Fault Zone. And some spotty activity here just on the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault and the Brawley Seismic Zone. Up into the area of Idaho, a couple scattered earthquakes up there. Yellowstone not showing anything. Let me double check that. Uh, stand by here for a second while I pull it up. It doesn't look like there's anything going on here. There's some of that earthquake activity from last night. Uh, that was around uh, the Alaska area and California picked up some of those seismic signatures. Today looks like a different story, uh, somewhat quieter here on the graphs. As far as local activity goes, it looks like maybe a handful 
of uh, some little spikes up here across the northeastern corner of Yellowstone National Park. But for the most part, uh, this doesn't look too active at all there across Yellowstone. All right, uh, rest of the country here, a little spotty movement, uh, including one earthquake from last night uh, near the Howard's, Howardville, Missouri area. That's on the New Madrid Seismic Zone region there, 2.1. What else we got here for worldwide activity? Looks like we definitely seen things stirring up out here across areas of the Indonesia Islands area. This is just very typical here to see across this plate boundary cluster of moderate quakes. And uh, let's see, the latest one, a 5.4, did see some deeper movement quakes back here in Fiji, uh, 621 kilometers deep. We get that bouncing back and forth here. Sometimes it's over in this area, far as shallow adjustment goes. Uh, but at the same time, that pressure gradient, let me show you guys here. We got the Pacific Plate here, the deeper movement in Fiji is right around this area. Uh, by the way, that's the accumulated slip rate in this region is quite high, between 240 and I think it's a little bit more than that uh, on certain areas. Uh, 240 mm per year. So a little bit higher than uh, most subduction zones. Uh, this area definitely capable of producing some larger quakes. Um, downstream and also upstream here. So when we see the deeper activity quakes here around Fiji, we watch that mo migration and momentum of pressure a lot of times, almost minutes later, follow this plate boundary. And that's kind of what it's doing here uh, this morning so far with the deeper activity here in Fiji. About an hour later, we're getting some further movement to the west within this area where we expect the pressure uh, to build following the uh, adjustment back here. So we continue to watch that uh, bouncing back and forth effect here. Deep, shallow, deep, shallow, deep. Quite a few deep earthquakes here in the last 24 hours. So we'll continue to watch this area remain clustered. Um, let's see what we got here for any uh, seismic gap zones here in the last 30 days. Uh, let's see here. I guess a little area here would be uh, around the uh, Port Villa area, Vanuatu region. Looks like a handful of uh, spaces open here across this area. And, of course, New Zealand sitting down there along the plate boundary. I'm still expecting these guys to move. I just don't know when. I guess it will go when it decides to go. As far as earthquake activity down there right now, looks like a little 3.2 North Island from last night. Really not seeing anything showing up there on the Earthquake 3D globe for now. Remember, the white rings are the newer earthquakes. The red rings here are the older ones, and of course, raised off the globe, indicating some deep movement quakes. Not a whole lot going on through the uh, Japan or the Kurokamachaka Trench up here for now. Areas Taiwan northward, northeastward here across Japan are awfully quiet today. Uh, the big island of Hawaii, Let's see what's going on out here. Looks like we're still seeing some earthquake activity, although... A little migration up here towards the crater area. Let's see what we got here for the latest information on Kilauea Volcano on the Big Island. The daily update was put out today. Uh, the volcano is currently not erupting. And uh, basically the same thing. The, the unrest south of the summit uh, is continuing over the past 24 hours with a slight decrease in seismicity in association with this intrusive magma event that began back in uh, early October. Um, it is unclear if unrest in Kilauea Summit region will continue, and it is not possible to say with certainty if any activity will lead to an eruption. Activity may remain below the ground surface. However, an eruption remains possible, most likely inside the summit region uh, and away from infrastructure. But it's always possible here uh, that we could see some... Um, some fissures opening up out here across this area, uh, just south of the summit region. That's where most of the uh, swarming has been confined. But uh, let's see what these are right here. These are these two earthquakes look relatively deep, so I'm not for sure uh, they've got to those or not. Far as the uh, oh, it's still underneath the automatic status, so those have not been reviewed. They could get revised. Uh, let's check out the tilt meters here. See what we got going on across this volcano on the big island that's a key indicator of well you know what's going on below the volcano far as uh 
magma intrusion goes. Now, looks like we're starting to see that inflation rise back up. I was kind of wondering last night if this was going to kick back up or not. It looks like it has uh, because of our overall trends here over the last 30 days. This is inflation uplift. Uh, inflation obviously means magma um, below the surface uh, kind of rising up, creating the uh, inflation here on this graph. Uh, we do have a couple days here of deflation if you look at the trends here. Now, I thought last night maybe we were going to dip right back down, and that was it for the uh, inflation data, but it looks like we're starting to climb right back up. Not as high as it was back on the uh, 21st time frame, 22nd time frame here during our last rise of inflation, but we'll continue to watch that and see how things go with that volcano. There's definitely something stirring up down there, that's for sure. <clears throat> All right. Anything else going on here across the world besides a lot of chaos? Uh, we do have, what's this, 4.7 way out here, away from the plate boundary. A bingo, bingo uh, fan. Let's see what we got. Bay of ben Bengal. I want to see what we got here for the uh, historical data. It's just a little odd to see that earthquake activity out there away from the plate boundary. Not a whole lot. This goes back here for the, uh, since about 1900, 2015. So not a whole lot of earthquake activity stirring up out here in this area of the bay. A little odd movement out there. And uh, some movement here across the Chi uh, India area from yesterday. Now Afghanistan region starting to fill in slightly in here as well. Uh, quite a few fours there scattered about the land. Uh, let's see here. Far as the Mediterranean goes, looks like a handful of earthquakes across this area. Twos and threes in the last 24 hours. 4.5 down in Africa. And let's see. South America region got a typical pancake of earthquake activity. Deep and shallow adjustment quakes there across the area of the Peru Chile Trench. But nothing big yet. Uh, but this area is definitely active. 4.5, 4.8 here in the last 24 hours. All right, space weather activity. We got anything major going on here, or are we back to quiet conditions? Looks like we are back to quiet conditions again here. Below the sea flare category once again. Goodness, I don't know what's going on here, but we're we should be peaking up here to solar maximum as we head into this coming year. They've revised that uh, from 2000. It was 2025, um, and it still is. This is, is their main. Uh, prediction right far as peaking out in 2025 June to be exact but they put out they the NOAA uh, the NOAA folks there uh, has put out an experimental prediction I don't know if they're just doing that to kind of keep up with what's going on in the sun that's I don't know if that's really uh, a good way to do it or not you know either you have a prediction or, and a forecast and if it goes above it, it goes above it. But you don't change the forecast to match what's actually going on. That's kind of like cheating on a test, isn't it? But anyway, uh, their latest one shows that it's going to peak out sometime here early 2024. Uh, between January and maybe October of this coming next year. So right now, though, things are very quiet. I don't know if we're done with Solar Maximum. Maybe they were way off and we are just completely done with it. Uh, sunspot activity is very minimal at best there's not a whole lot of complexity within any of these sunspots i called it last night i said it last night and i'll say it again i don't see anything up there that would even qualify for a 10 percent chance for an m flare at all um not a whole lot going on here we are looking at though this coronal hole number 66 which is uh looks like it's built into one now there was two separate regions over the past 24, 36 hours, this had been facing us. So now we are getting the forecast here for the arrival of the solar wind stream. Uh, solar wind stream looks like around the October 30th time frame with a G1 class storm. We'll watch this as we get closer. I think tomorrow we'll have a little bit better perspective on when exactly that will arrive um, and how strong uh, potential, potentially this could kick up. Again, that's going to be from the coronal hole 
the high speed solar wind stream arriving right around the October 30th time frame. Kicking up the aurora as possible on that three day geomagnetic forecast. But aside from that, folks, uh, it's just a. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's weird how it went from very active to absolutely nothing. All right, what do we got here for a weather outlook here today? It was a little cold this morning again here, uh, but quite windy. We have a very dry north wind kicking up right now, <clears throat> drying out my voice box. Marginal risk here for some severe weather, uh, and that looks like it's due to mainly some wind and some hail threats out there across areas of West Odessa and Pecos, Texas. All right, uh, but aside from that, not a whole lot of uh, major change going on there. Uh, the weather models out here, far as the uh, symbols, this is going to be the uh, the forecast here um, that these computers put together. Cold, cold low pressure system here going to be scooting off the west coast, headed eastward, uh, and that's going to be replaced here with some high pressure. We got highs coming back in the mid 70s. I mean, that's better than 80s and 90s, I guess. Um, but cooler, much cooler out here as we head into the end of this month. Last couple days of this month and into the first week of November. And then after that, well, we'll have to see how these patterns hold up. It is that time of year where things start going crazy and uh, just getting all mixed up in the weather patterns. So keep an eye on things and uh, see how everything plays out. There's uh, not a whole lot going on across the seismograph stations here for now. Everything looks fairly calm. Uh, didn't check trimmer last night. Let me double check that and see what it looks like. Well, from yesterday, there was nothing, not a, not any trimmer at all. And this has been a little odd here. Um, our last major trimmer event was of October last year. Uh, this October we had, you know, hardly anything. There's, there's been a couple spouts here of elevated trimmer. That was back in April. Let me get out of there. And a little bit there in June. But for the most part, we're looking at a an extreme time frame here of very minimal trimmer. The trimmer count's going to be elevated here. And if you look throughout the years, we've had periods of regular intervals of uptick. And some of these match out around, oh, I don't know, a couple hundred or thousand a day, over a thousand a day that can strike up there. But we haven't seen anything like that here across the Cascadia uh, subduction zone since October of last year. So just kind of watching that. There was a similar pattern, it looks like, back in uh, 2000, 2018 to about 2019, maybe 2020, uh, where it was somewhat quiet. So they come and go. You know, these little trends. Uh, trimmer activity is definitely something to watch because this helps us maybe understand and potentially in the forecast, later in the forecast, you know, years or so, definitely years, uh, help us predict the next Cascadia uh, mega quake, earthquake, uh, which is capable of producing a 9.0. You know, these little trends are interesting to watch. We can pass all the data along to our future scientists and geologists. Um, after we see the big one here i don't know if we're going to see it or not you never know it may happen today it may be uh in a hundred years or so but we're getting constrained here that's for sure uh out along the cascadia subduction zone but it does help to review this data and see what may have happened you know pending we do see that large one uh see what the cycles were like far as tremor activity and earthquakes go uh, prior to that big one hitting i think it plays a major part in uh Hopefully one day uh, accurately predicting earthquakes. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Have yourself a wonderful day and uh, stay safe out there. It's a weekend, crazy world going on right now. Best thing to do is uh, be prepared and have a plan. Take care, folks. We'll catch you guys back here later tonight. Peace out.